live from Royal Oak, Michigan in the Echo Network Studios. This is Odd Musings, and we are your hosts, Brett Pinson. And Scott Zambelli. Welcome back this week. We hear, uh, we've got some sponsors with us this week. Uh, we've got Alan from Chubby Duck hanging out with us. But first, we have to talk about coffee. I'm sorry, Starbucks was down yesterday, but guess what? There was a ton of coffee everywhere, including my kitchen. I had coffee this morning, drank it all the way here, and then had to go to the next door to the coffee place and get more. So don't yeah. worry. There's more than Starbucks out there if their computers are down again today. So don't worry about those breaking news. We got you covered. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to survive this coffee apocalypse. <laughs> um, just to illustrate how ridiculous this was, um, Brett posted a breaking <laughs> news story on iBusings. It was actually through our local NBC channel, WDIV. Yeah. They actually had a breaking news alert to tell us <laughs> Starbucks coffee's computers were down. I, I couldn't believe it. I'm watching this live so I can catch some of the weather since we've got some great 80-something degree weather here this week in Michigan. But um, they were like, um, breaking news right from the commercial. And then Starbucks computers are down. And I'm, I'm laughing the whole time watching this. Fortunately, with DVR, I can back it up. And that's what I did my little video with. It was, uh, I think, the most ridiculous breaking news I've ever heard. Um, Starbucks is fine for those that like uh, stuff. I just drink regular coffee. So I'm not into the different foo-foo drinks and fluffy stuff and things like that. Although, I do have a friend out in Boston, Gracie, who works for Starbucks. Hi, Gracie, if you're listening. Uh, she does the best butterbeer version of a frappuccino I've ever had. So definitely if you're out in the Boston, New England area, you have to track down Gracie and get her to make you one of those. Um, that's my little plug for Gracie, not for the other place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, so I, you know, I typically make my own coffee too. So I was not affected. Um, and evidently the whole country just went on, uh, uh, which was amazing. We didn't come to a complete stop. I yeah. was shocked. Yeah. The people that live on Starbucks expected to be riding in the streets. Yeah. Now talk about know. complete stops though. <laughs> What is with Michigan construction? Well, I mean, it kind of speaks in its words. I mean, the Michigan construction is just the, the normal oxymoron here in Michigan. We, you know, the state tree is the orange barrel. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. It, Michigan, the state of Michigan is amazingly at efficient at creating inefficiencies. Well, and up by where you live, I heard they just shut, out, shut down Hall Road. Well, they, they, <laughs> they have like this formula, I think, where they calculate every possible route that I will ever use to, and block it somehow. Well, of course. I mean, yeah. It's, it's their goal to delay you as much as possible. Yeah, and, and I, have a, I, I now have a new conspiracy theory. It's, uh, you know, they're putting all these cameras up at the intersections. Yes. It's not there to catch people going through lights or anything. What it is is, like, they're, they're watching, and they're like, oh, no, Scott's going to be on time. <laughs> we have to create a new obstacle. Well, see, so. <laughs> they're, they're building up their video for the Christmas party. And like, look, at, here's, here's our, our rendition of the 80 times we got Scott. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, and, so, like, and you know there's a guy going, this is my favorite. This is where you can really see the anger in the beard. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. And sometimes I think it's, uh, it's personal. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's catered specifically to you. Like even when I was coming to the studio today, today is really the only day that I have an appointment to be. Yep. And I've driven it a hundred times, you know, in this area, no problem. And then today it's like, I got to be at the studio by 945. And accident, barrels, <laughs> crews, paving, everything. Uh, <laughs> I have to leave by, uh, from where I live at, by 7.30 to try to be here by 9. Uh, I was actually 25 minutes early today, which I'd rather be way early than late. Because um, we try to get here early to prep for the show. And I'm sitting outside, I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm here a little early. So I actually got some more coffee, because as I said, there is no problem with the coffee out there. Got <coughs> Scott's favorite hazelnut. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's an inside joke for us. I like my coffee black, yeah, so. black and plain. Yes, <laughs> but it's it's, it's I have tons of traffic coming up. Um, I can come two ways: I can either go of ninety four to seventy five, or come two seventy five to six ninety six. Because I'm right in the middle of that whole thing. It's been fast for me to take the two seventy five to six ninety six, so the GPS kind of yells at me for a while. But it's traffic's backed up, but it's not as bad as it's been on ninety four heading to Detroit, which is still a great drive, but not when you're sitting there, not moving. Right. So. And then, yeah. And personally, I would like to drive 94 because I like seeing the giant tire. Mm -hmm. You know, it leads you right into Detroit and you get a little nice little skyline and shoot up 75. But besides traffic this morning, because we're not here as a traffic show, um, we've got a lot of other topics today we're going to be covering. Um, there was notice to us today. We've got this one hanging out with us. She's not on air, but she's a Battlestar Galactica fan. And May 18th, 1979. Yeah, that's a major anniversary coming up. And it's the 38th anniversary yep for of, uh, the Battlestar Galactica the TV series yeah, yeah. so for the original one season that they did um, this doesn't include the Battlestar 1980 because we we're gonna try to forget that <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean it's not 
horrible. It's just really bad. <laughs> yeah, I uh, and I, they were. I don't know what they were thinking back then, but I was a kid, and I remember watching it, going, "Oh my God, where's the space battles? They're not on Earth. This isn't good." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That time, you know, I remember uh, Battlestar Galactica was huge. I was always watching. It was like I think it was that and Little House on the Prairie were back to back, <laughs> if I remember right, when I was growing up. But uh, watch both of those. And, uh, a weird mix. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, it was the 70s. And if I remember right, too, Asteroids was huge in uh, Atari, because I, I think I was always yeah. playing that. And it was a huge arcade game, and, yeah. and uh, still, even to this day, it's funny, as, as simple a look as it is, it's a fun game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I still play that once in a while, and I see an old arcade, I'll pop a quarter in and, and take a shot at it. Yeah. But so, yeah, Battlestar Galactica was one of my favorite shows back in the day. Uh, of course, it led into our Star Wars fandoms. Uh, that had been before that. That's where a lot of this came from. In fact, a lot of the effects guys worked on Battlestar Galactica that were from Lucasfilm originally. So that's why there's some similarities in terms of the special effects. So. Well, yeah, that and, well, there was that. Um, there was a lawsuit. Epic lawsuit too <laughs> between the uh, Lucasfilm and uh, Battlestar Galactica as well. Yeah. So yeah, but in the end, it all worked out, and uh, you know, uh, Richard Hatch was a major part of that show. Played Apollo, yep. and, um, and he passed away recently. And uh, I had a chance to meet him a few times at shows, and mm -hmm. always just a class act guy. I enjoyed talking to him whenever I had a chance at the shows, and. Yeah. Uh, he was one of those celebrities that definitely when he passed it was a, it was a shock first of all because it wasn't expected and um, you know definitely going to be missed because I enjoyed him even on the newer Battlestar Galactica he was really good on that yeah. and he was a big proponent of trying to bring back the original Battlestar well, and, and what a lot of people who are more if they're more casual fans what they don't realize is how much writing he did for Battlestar yes. even, not just on the show but also uh, with the comic books that came mm -hmm. out he did writing for and uh, he even did a, a, a script earlier in the 2000s that he shot a, pot, uh, a, a test pilot for it wasn't even a full episode and it was a great way to revisit the series 25 years later. Right. Uh, something I would like to see, as much as the, the newer Battlestar on Sci-Fi was fun, I'd like to have seen the original characters come back and uh, see them 25 years later, because in the show they never made it to Earth. Battlestar Galactic 1980, I still don't count that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it did happen, Brett. I know. <laughs> you can't will it out of existence. You see, I really wish someone would Mandela that like the Baron Sanders. <laughs> But um, there you go. Scott, I'm going to throw it to you. We've got a, a guest in the studio here. We've yes. got Alan from the Chubby Duck. So yes, I'm about the Chubby Duck. Okay, well, we got Alan Tong here. And like like Brett said, he's from the Chubby Duck restaurant, which is down in the, um, it's located in the heart of uh, downtown Detroit there. And uh, Chubby Duck is working to bring the freshest local ingredients together with a little Motown soul to create a new and sustainable food tradition that everyone can afford to enjoy. So, uh, Alan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, you, you, you brought some goodies here today. Uh, I see food. Yeah, should we try some here? Uh, people, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll experiment on the air, see how it goes. Sure. Um, this is our new segment called, What's Brett Gonna Eat Next? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, this is not pudding. Right, so <laughs> we sell uh, sushi downtown, but today I brought uh, some of our signature items, which are a little bit different than the usual California rolls and mm -hmm. things like that. It's a different type of wrap. Uh, yeah, so this is like. um, this is what we call our, our cones. Um, we, the cones come in all kinds of different uh, meats and fish and stuff, but I know that uh, you guys had mentioned that uh, uh, not everybody was into the fish, so I brought some meat ones today. Um, okay. So this so is what the cones kind of look like. That one there is a, a chicken. Looks good. So here is uh, another chicken. Another chicken, all right. Uh, Doug, this, you like chicken, right? He's like, I guess. Sure do, yes. <laughs> I'll eat anything up there. So no, this, <laughs> this one is Mongolian beef. Ooh, get some Mongolian beef. That looks good, too. All right. And this good. is our new introduction that we call um, a stacker. Okay. So there is rice on the bottom with uh, sushi on top with the sauce. Okay. Um, it looks really good. This is like a spicy sauce? Yes, it's okay. spicy mayo. Um, it is um, an alternative to a rice bowl. Okay. Um, and it does come in tuna, uh, salmon, and shrimp. Uh, the one I think you have there is, is tuna. I'm pretty sure it's Grab tuna. I can smell the tuna. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's got a nice smell to it. It really does smell good. For uh, those watching on live and listening to radio, it's like, I can't smell nothing. Well, they do this to me on the news all the time, so guess what? So here's yeah, if you're watching on Facebook Live, like I'm holding the chicken wrap, or what is it? Yeah. Chicken cone? It's a chicken cone. Chicken I think cone. that's a cool thing. That looks like nice yeah. and portable, since you guys are right downtown, so you get a lot of probably business guys here in the day. 
Yes. And where people are working on there come down, grab a cone, and just walk, walk them back to their office, they can eat. Right, exactly. And well, what is the wrap made out of? The wrap is actually a seaweed. Okay. And if I remember right, you do something special with your seaweed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's um, not to be confused with seaweed from Z Nation. Uh, yes, yes, no. <laughs> yeah, you guys aren't hopefully smoking it in something <laughs> weird. Well, I don't know. Some of our creations, we, uh, we may. <laughs> All right. Well, Scott, let me try it. Let me see what you think. He's trying the cone with the chicken right now. It sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> trying not to crunch into the microphone. Yeah. It's very good. Well, it's that, got a little crunch to it, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's the difference in some of the cones, you know, that we make versus other people. That we tr we use our seaweed and we keep it crunchy, okay. so that instead of when you, you bite you bite into it, you don't rip it. It it, it crunches. It crunches. Yeah. It, I got a nice clean bite out of it. You know, and it's really good. Oh. The rice is good. The Thank chicken, you. good flavor on the chicken. And then I have a salmon. Is what you said. Spicy Spice salmon. Spicy yep. salmon. Looks like it's got some avocado. Yep. Uh, I've got rice in the bottom with the sauce on top. Mm -hmm. and a little bit of the uh, wasabi on the side, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, the ginger. And then there's uh, the spicy mayo. Got spicy mayo on it. Got some little look like little shallots, onions. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely looks really good. I'm gonna give a bite of this. And while Brett's chewing there, um, Alan gave me a packet of soy sauce to put on this, but I'm a little worried about it getting messy right now. <laughs> so I didn't put it on. It's still very flavorful without adding. I didn't add anything to it. I still See, really I, like I, it. I didn't add either, and the taste of this alone, I think, doesn't need the soy sauce. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so it adds a lot to it. It's got a nice little spice to it from the mayo. I just for the second bite, I'm going to have a little bit of wasabi. Mm. Oh, that's very good. That's really good. Thank you. Hey, I'm, not I'm not just saying that because you're a sponsor. I'm saying this is really good. This is something I could definitely go and eat. And then I'm definitely going to be finished one more bite. <laughs> and I'll say, like, for me, I'm not the type of person that would eat seaweed. I, I tend to stick to very boring and traditional choices. And uh, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a fan of sushi. So as I told Alan last week when we talked, he can bring anything, and I'm willing to try it. Because I enjoy sushi, and I go uh, whenever I get a chance to. A um, couple different places around the metro Detroit area. Mm -hmm. uh, this definitely is going to be, uh, not just, again, not just because you're a sponsor. Uh, this is definitely going to be on my list of definitely places. I'm going to have to go down and really hit a restaurant. Uh, we may have to make a trip on a Wednesday one time after the show and just drive on down. Definitely. So as far as finding your, your uh, location, where how do people find you online? How do they find you downtown? Uh, yeah, we have um, a, a Facebook page, uh, at, uh, at Chubby Duck. Uh, it's actually at Chubby Duck Detroit. Yes, Detroit. Um, because there is a another Chubby Duck which uh, we're unaffiliated with. Um, at one point, we were together, but right. we've split off. So we're Chubby Duck Detroit on Facebook. Um, our menu on there is constantly being updated. Right now, I think it's still slightly an older menu. Yeah, you're um, going through a like almost a, a rebranding in a way. Yes, we are. We just uh, we just had an article on uh, Eater Detroit. Yeah, we uh, shared that on the uh, Odd Music's Facebook page. For those that didn't see it, definitely check that out. Thank mm -hmm. you. And um, we're we're experimenting in the kitchen all the time. Actually, the stack that uh, that Brett had, we just introduced it last week. Okay, so I'm one of the first people to try it. Then. Right. Um, we looked at uh, we looked at some of these things and we thought, you know what? A lot of people come in and they just want to order a rice bowl, mm -hmm. and it just looks kind of boring with rice and you just, just throw some stuff on it. So we thought we'd dress it up a little bit. I, I, this is something that if I worked uh, where I was taking it back to an office, something mm -hmm. like that, but I wanted to have more than just a, like a wrap sandwich. This is perfect. You got a little bit of rice, mm -hmm. got some avocado, which I like, mm -hmm. and then you got the meat on top. I think that's a, I think it's a perfect way to go, and I love the presentation of it. Yeah, um, at the restaurant we probably would throw in a little bit of. Um, uh, out of momming on the side, mm -hmm. um, nice. so it, it's it's healthy too. Mm -hmm. And you also do like a seaweed salad too that could be on the side too, right? Uh, we have a cucumber salad. Cucumber salad. Okay. Yeah, um, we're we're limited to some of the items that we can have in, in the kitchen mm -hmm. um, due to uh, space. Yes, um, but uh, it is a, a, a healthy menu, uh, healthy enough that uh, the Detroit YMCA actually came and asked us to sell in in their place. Oh, awesome. So we just uh, made the deal on Monday, actually, Very and cool. uh, we'll cool. be selling our oh, foods um, in in the YMCA 
Um, and where's the YMCA? Well, excuse me. Where is the YMCA located uh, near you guys? Is it across the street or is it it's uh, or? it's actually Kitty Corner. We're not okay. quite on the corner. We're like three stores off of uh, Grand River, and I can't, geez, I can't remember the name. <laughs> We're right across from the Punch Bowl. Okay, people should know the Punch Bowl. Yeah, right, the, you're near the Detroit Athletic Club. Right, and I think the we Detroit talked Opera House. And we talked a couple weeks ago. You're right off the new M1 line there, the Q line. A couple blocks. A couple off. blocks. Yeah, so yeah. it's easy to hop off, run up there, get some sushi, hop back on. Now you're you yeah. are a carry out, correct? Are there tables at all? For yeah, people we're actually technically a quick serve. Okay. So we do have 12 seats available. Okay. But uh, so people can eat there. They can eat there, and we do have okay. a lot of people there. You know, last Friday, you know, we were full up. We have seating outdoors. As well, awesome. Well, especially the days like today where it's really nice and warm, it's a great time to go hang mm-hmm. out, get some good sushi. Yeah. And downtown Detroit right right now, it's really, it, it's, it's it, a fun place to go. And, 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 and that whole area has been revitalized these last ten years. I think you guys are a prime location yeah. to be a part of that. So yeah, you got the Red Wings building there, a new arena. The yeah. Pistons are going to be going back downtown starting next next season, right? Right. Starting in fall, we have two. Yeah. Big changes in sport. New arena for the hockey, and then, and of course, Ford Field and Comerica Park are there. you got the Fox Theater. There's so much to do down there. Yeah. And, you know, I know when I go down there, I'm always looking for a good place to eat. Yes. And, you know, here you got something that's delicious and healthy at the Chubby, chubby Duck. Yep, I think it sounds great. Yeah. And, um, and uh, Connie, the Comic-Con mom, chimed in online <laughs> saying that uh, she's liking what we're talking about here and she may have to go down there real soon. Yeah, I think we're going to have to have uh, the Comic-Con mom on at one point and we'll take her out for lunch at Chubby Duck afterwards. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Alan. Sure, uh, no problem. The food is great and I'm looking forward as soon as the show ends, I'm going to be chowing down. Oh, I'll this. be inhaling this, I'm sure. <laughs> and then you're going to hang out with us the rest of the show. Sure. And uh, just if you have a chime in, please chime in with us. And All right. We're talking some fun stuff. Um, Scott did a great poll on Doctor Who. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, give me a moment to pull that up. Um, for those that have been watching the current season, uh, I just got caught up. I was a little bit behind. Um, we may have some spoilers on that. So if you're not caught up, that's Doctor Who. You'll still watch it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now, what the most recent episode was episode five? Four or five. It's yeah. I think it was, it, was, so it was five. It was, it was a cool episode. Um, Very fun episode. Um, I've been liking, just to talk about the season as a whole, I, I wasn't as much enjoying it last year, and I think they were starting to find their ground with the new Doctor. Mm-hmm. They've come back to him being the Doctor more than it was last year. Last year, um, they spent too much time him being you know, like a rock star, being yeah. weird. He went to Sonic sunglasses. Well, I think, I think what was suffering from last year was um, I enjoyed... Uh, Clara, right? Or Clara? Yeah, Clara, Clara, Clara was uh, the companion I, last year. I enjoyed her as a companion, but I, I think the problem with her was, I think they did her storyline and was wrapped up with it seasons ago. Yeah. But then, because she was popular, they forced, they, they created a I kind of disagree a little bit, just because, I, I don't know how popular she was, because everybody at the, the conventions I talked to, nobody, they like, they all said the same thing, I like her, well, I, but I don't like her as a companion, they like the actress. Well... That's Doctor Who syndrome <laughs> with the fans. Unfortunately, the fan. No matter who, whoever the current is, they hate. Well, and I then as soon as the current is gone, everyone says that was the best ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like I was. I'm a, my my favorite Doctor is Matt Smith, and then right. Uh, and he, but he's really. I mean, I, I don't want to compare the old with the new. Um, I grew up with the fourth Doctor, and he's still one of my all time favorites and that. But in the modern era, Matt Smith is my favorite. Mm-hmm. When he came on, I liked him right away, and every that was at the shows was going, "Oh, I wish Tennant was still here." And I'm like, they fulfilled his storyline. Right, he he did, and he they got two regeneration or well one regeneration, two versions of him. Right, so you know, tenant tenant milked his time, <laughs> <laughs> and he still I saw him. Which Billy, is why his final lines are I don't want to go. Yeah, I saw him and uh, I believe it's Billy Piper are coming back to do some more radio stuff for the the tenth Doctor. So there's tons of BBC radio stuff out mm-hmm. there. Definitely, um, but you know I like Matt Smith, and I thought he got a shortened season for well, basically they took a whole season and put it in the last movie for him. Which was a shame because I really enjoyed him. And that would fulfill, I think, yeah. a better storyline with everything going on with Clara because I think they're building up. But they wanted to go a different direction. And I like Capaldi. Uh, I like him as an actor. Um, I think he does a, a good job acting in this uh, as the doctor. I don't always blame the actors when it comes to writing. Uh, they have no control over that. Yeah, the, well, for um, Capaldi, he's a good throwback to the classic doctors, too, I think. Yes. I, I think he's a good combination of those. You mentioned you liked... Um, um, uh, Baker, yes, uh, as yours. That's the fourth doctor. My favorite for the classics is John Pertwee. He was the third. Mm-hmm. Um, no doctor in history has had a better judo throw <laughs> than the third doctor. 
Uh, he used like the one move in every fight. <laughs> <laughs> He's also the only doctor that didn't run. So you guys are going way farther back than yeah. I am. I, uh, I probably you... am familiar with, uh, I think, 10 and 11. Okay. okay. Yep. Well, that's Tennant and Matt Smith. Right. Um, for the well, new doctors, my favorites are um, the ninth doctor, Eccleston. He's my second, Levin. right behind Matt Smith. Matt and Matt Smith is my personal favorite yeah. too. I know the Tenant fans are probably crying right now. Um, <laughs> Chris Eccleston was really good though, and uh, I tell you, you really need to start with him. He brought the series back. It had been on in many years at this point. They've done like a couple movies over like decades, and that was it. Right. Um, it never really left the radio though. They were still kind of doing some radio stuff, especially with Eight. Eight's done a lot more radio and had the one movie. Um, yeah, Paul McGann was awesome. Um, He's just not, he's a little farther down my list just because of how well he did as far as the TV side. Right. Actually, he technically did do TV, he did the TV movie. Right. Um, but the little, uh, they had that micro, little five minute micro. Um, it, was like a, it was like a mini episode. Mini almost. episode. And, and, uh, to introduce him and to show him becoming the war doctor. Right. And that was a great way they handled that. Yeah, I like that. I thought that was a great way to, to tie it all together. And that would be good. We've, uh, I've seen him in a few shows. I know you've probably seen him again in a few shows around mm -hmm. the country. We travel for the Comic-Cons. And great guy. A couple of us talked to him. People seem to really like him. Uh, those yeah. that don't know him, when they go meet oh, he's a doctor. They go meet him. They end up yeah. watching the movie, and they find out, you know, this guy was really good. Yeah. It just didn't take off. And he, he is heavily involved, too, with the audio books. And so yes. He does a lot of those. Um, now, my hope is age wise he's still pretty good yeah he's not, he, he, yeah. he was a young doctor when they cast him mm -hmm. and um with with the um i always mix up the the titles the one where um the war doctor um what was that called <laughs> anyways uh, day of the doctor day of the doctor yeah day of the doctor it's the 50th anniversary yeah. special so and when when tom baker comes back as the uh, curator yeah, he was like the librarian. Right, and he mm -hmm. says to... God, there's so many doctors in my head right now. <laughs> but he says, well, he's you'll to revisit Smith. old faces. Yeah. And I'm hoping that means at some point, Paul McGann will come back. It would, would be nice. I'm, I'm hoping that that wasn't just something just to throw in for that episode that we could see that. They've, they've been hinting at it. Mm -hmm. And I think they could do a spinoff show of Here's the Eighth Doctor. They could set it back in the 80s when, he was, when they did the movie. I think it was the 80s, early 90s. Um, and so back in that era, I think it'd be a fun thing. It's, it's Doctor Who. They travel through time. They can still do different things. It's, it's stuff like that. But even with like Matt Smith, I'm still hoping they go and do more with River. Um, they did wrap up her story last year, uh, but they still gave her more years. But I, right. I, River was one of my favorite characters uh, during the Matt Smith era. Oh yeah, she, she's always been a good one. <coughs> but, um, but then to bring it forward to the current time too. Um, with, with some of the characters, we just had breaking news about um, Michelle Gomez, who plays Missy. Yep, she's so, finishing up her run on the Doctor Who series. Yeah, so she won't be back. And I really enjoyed her as well. Oh, she, she was a great villain. She was the master. Yes, she played the um, master, and uh, she portrayed just a really great version of the master. She was a great villain. Um, I enjoyed the run on her. Um, there was talk, you know, they wanted a female doctor, and they brought in Capaldi. And originally, I when they announced her as the master. I'd be like, oh, they're just like a. No, she did a great job. She was perfect. Yeah, um, I liked her better than the um, the other act, the the male actor who played the master. Um, and he is come back. I still liked him too. Yeah. But I, I really enjoyed Missy's take on it. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. So I do have the results of the poll. It just took me forever to figure out my technology <laughs> here to get to there. <laughs> I'll get faster. So what do we got here? Who's who? okay? Well, oh, we have a tie for first place. Uh, with, uh, let's see, so the first and second place tie is David Tennant and Matt Smith. So, well, that kind of makes sense. Yep, so that, that's their uh, third place, Eccleston, yep. the ninth doctor. Fourth place, appropriately, is the fourth doctor. Okay. <laughs> Baker has a huge following still. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I, I know you said you like him. I don't understand <laughs> it. He's a complete jerk to everybody <laughs> like to his know, companions I, the fourth doctor i grew up watching him on channel 56 in right. detroit as well as once while on channel 9 out of cbc windsor yeah. so i caught that and that was back when i was a kid in the late 70s and early 80s right so. but when like i was talking with another friend of mine about this how like how do you judge your doctors and she said uh for her it's you know if she was a companion who would she want to travel with and Baker would be the last one I'd want to travel with. He was, he was so rude to, to his companions. He was very smug. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I digress. 
<laughs> but uh, so we got Tom Baker at four. Yeah. Number five is is my pick, John Pertwee. Uh, number six. Oh, they're tied. Fifth and sixth are tied. Uh, Capaldi, number twelve. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Twelve. Doctor Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then, then we got a couple votes in for Peter Davidson, who was the fifth doctor, the eighth doctor, Paul McGann, and the war doctor, played by John Hurt. Which was, I really like the war doctor. I would yeah. like to see more of that, but I know that everything got wrapped up there, so we'll go there. Yeah, so, um, so there I, we go. That's our, that's that's pretty our cool. I, I hope everybody enjoyed doing that. We're going to try to do more polls, so definitely keep watching the website. Uh, watching our Facebook page. Yeah, um, I'm experimenting with how to do these, uh, what the best method is. This is one here. Um, I'm learning how to do the Twitter polls now and different things. So um, they'll evolve into a better format as it goes. But yeah, this is a fun way to interact with the listeners and that you guys can get your opinions put in. And of course, speaking of Doctor Who, this weekend we're going to be at the Motor City Comic Con. Yes. And Billy Piper's going to be there. Yes. Uh, uh, who one of my favorite Rose, companions. One of the, uh, she's definitely... A, it's funny going back to the Doctor Who thing. You know, it's everyone couldn't let her go. Now when I'm at, there's a big. She's a very divisive one too. I hear a lot of people like, oh, I don't like her. Which five years ago at a con, you would never hear that. No. no. Which is so. I, I just think it's like the younger crowd coming up and. Yeah, it's it's as different like companions. They start liking a new companion or right. something like that. They get hooked on them. It's, it takes over. The Doctor Who fans, you know, they they're very rabid and, and fan yeah. really fanatic about it, but. It varies on from time to time. Yeah, a lot so of people will say, oh, well, Tim's still my favorite, but yeah, so I finally like Matt Smith and all these gone. <laughs> right. Yeah, so Billy Piper will be there. Yeah. And she was also in Penny Dreadful. Um, she did a great job in there also. Um, I mean, she's been in other Yeah, she did Secret Life of the Call Girl was a big show for her. Which, um, which, in, <laughs> which there is a Doctor Who tie in there. Okay. Because one of her clients is the 11th Doctor, okay. Matt Smith. I, I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, it's a brief scene, but her and Matt Smith are together in a scene. Yeah. And then also, uh, John Barrymore is going to be there. No. Bar 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 <laughs> Bar Bar there you go. See, now you got me making wrong mistakes here. I blame Scott. No, no, no relation to Drew Barrymore. No, Drew. She's got John Barrowman. There you go. Um, and I also saw his sister is going to be there with him. She's done some writing on, uh, looks like comic books based on the Merlin character for Arrow. Yeah. They have novels they've done together. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a neat thing. I've not really seen her at shows before. Yeah, um, I don't so this recall is a, her being at a show. Uh, Barrowman, he's, for the Comic-Con veterans out there, the fans who go to many shows, he, he does a lot of shows, but boy, he really goes all out for the fans. His, his panels... Are fun. Well, the way and most of them end up on on YouTube somewhere. Yes, definitely. And uh, he he does a wonderful job. Just he, yeah. when he's there, he's there for the fans. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, he was there uh, a few years back at Morse, so it's not his first time. Uh, but if you missed him last time, it's a great chance to meet him. And I did have a friend of mine that met him, took a great picture. Both her, I, or I think it was, <laughs> it was a friend of hers. Was it one of the anything goes pictures? It not it wasn't too bad. It wasn't risque, but they both had this kind of weird look like, oh my god, we're here. You know, they love the guy, but then they put him in a tiara and gave him flowers, and he's just fully hamming it up for the picture. It's one of the best pictures I've seen of him on like, some of the stuff here. Yeah, for those who don't know, John Barrowman, he he plays Captain Jack, not not Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, was it Harkness? Har Harkness. Yeah, Harkness. And uh, he was part and, of the um, Torchwood Institute. Correct, which I love that series. I really yes. enjoyed that. That was a spin-off series from uh, Doctor Who. Yep, they did a great job with that. They ran through uh, like four seasons. They did a uh, Children of the Earth movie, mm -hmm. uh, which was really good. That That's an interesting one. So, that, Or am I mixing up the titles again? Is that the one where no one died? <laughs> um, no, the first one, Children of Earth, then they did the one on Showtime for a year where nobody would die. Yeah. And that kind of, they were trying to, the baggage were trying to actually kill Captain Jack. So. I, I thought that was an interesting premise on how it actually would affect society when, if there was no more death. Right. So, like, it, was, it was very interesting. Yeah, because they still had camps, and then basically they were, that was weird. You have to watch it. I'm not going to get into too much. That's a, probably a whole episode itself. Um, but yeah, we, um, of course, joining us besides Billy Piper and John Barrowman this weekend, because Scott and I will be set up at the Motor City Comic Con. Yes. We have uh, our sponsor, T-24. And as you guys know, T-E-E-M-I-N-U-S-2-4.com is a great place to get all your geeky, nerdy t-shirts, like what Scott's wearing today. They also are going to have, at the show this weekend, because they will be at Motor City Comic Con, they're going to have a whole selection of uh, their t-shirts, vinyl decals, um, and of course, then you get to meet Vinny and Lisa in person, which I think is just a great thing. Yeah, so. they'll be set up there with their booth. You can see their whole selection of t-shirts, but they also have a huge selection of decals for yes. your cars, for your computers, whatever, mm -hmm. um, bumper stickers, 
So they, they got a, they got buttons. Yep. So shirts and decals for your fandom. Right. So definitely check that out. But definitely go to t minus twenty four dot com to look at them first. Yep. Uh, if you do shop online, uh, there is a coupon code ODD at ten percent off your entire purchase. That is an online only code. Correct. But come on to the show. Buy yeah. a T-shirt. Buy a button. Buy a sticker. Buy yeah. a bumper sticker. Right. And if you can't make it to the show. Go online. We have you go to oddmusings.com if you don't remember their website because we have them listed there as well, and you can shop through there. Yep. And yep. it's my understanding, Alan, you recently bought a shirt from them. Is that correct? I did. Uh, I uh, I bought a shirt online through your sponsor site or the the link. Yep. Cool. And I used the code odd, and I got a couple bucks off. Awesome. And yeah, and they include free shipping, I, I believe, too. It's in yes, correct. Yes. Awesome. And what what shirt did you pick out? Do you remember? Doctor Who. Oh, hey. <laughs> Very cool. Which one? The home one? With yeah, the it's, on it? it's the TARDIS with the word uh, home. Oh. Yep. And Very cool. uh, yeah. I should See, get it by next where week. Everybody awesome. should definitely go to the show on Friday, buy the home one before they go meet Billy Piper, before they go meet John Carmen. <laughs> yes. Wear the shirt, take it up there. Maybe they'll want to sign it for free. I'm not saying they'll sign it for free. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything happens for free. No, 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 no. But I, it's a great Doctor Who shirt to wear. I also plan on going to uh, Motor City, and I, oh, have, awesome. I have tickets for all three days. And awesome. I will be standing in line for <laughs> Billy Piper, uh-huh. uh, for, you know, Doctor Who. And nice. There are a couple other people that I'm interested in. I'm more of a... a Star Wars, Star Trek fan. I don't know so much about like Arrow and and the Flash and those right. other guys. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, actually like Lou Ferrigno, the yeah. Hulk. Oh, you, yeah. you gotta have it. You know? yeah. uh, I think uh, Levar Burton from Star Trek: Next Generation and Will Wheaton. Yep, Will Wheaton's gonna oh, be there. Right. Yep. So I don't so. know. Um, let me ask you guys if yeah. if you had a um, an option for the the photographs of which one you're gonna get him to Will Wheaton to sign. Okay. Would you do Star Trek or would you do Big Bang Theory? I, I think I would do Big Bang Theory personally. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I, I love how he mocks himself in there. Yeah. And plus the whole feud between him and Sheldon is awesome. That was I watched the one last night. Um, they were going to uh, rerun last night. And it was the one where he comes in to watch Star, Star Wars with them and he's dressed up as a Vulcan. <laughs> but he's got to represent Star Trek, you know. Um, I, and I know it's the show they write that way. It seemed perfectly in his uh, his yeah. line of humor. And What's also cool about Will Wheaton is, um, for many years, he he took a beating from fans, <laughs> man, and he he managed to take that negativity and turn it around to something really cool, where he's viewed positively by those same fans that were. <laughs> well, yeah, he's actually one of the original people that started uh, blogging early on in the early yes. the internet. He's been doing the podcast for many years. Mm-hmm. Um, he talks about all the geeky stuff he's into, gaming, things like that. Yeah. So it's a lot of cool stuff. And then, of course, the Big Bang Theory, it just was inevitable he had to be on the show. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and definitely in the feud and that. So I, it's tough. You know, the the hard part about which picture do you get Will Wheaton to sign, I think once you get up there and you see what he has available, you're going to you're gonna see when, like, this is the perfect way to represent the fandom. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, since you, if, being a Star Trek fan, you almost want to see if he's got one from that episode where he's dressed up as Spock, <laughs> but it's Big Bang Theory, and, yeah. and you got basically the best of both worlds there. Or you could just take your shirt off and ask him to sign your chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and then you just go down the road and get it tattooed on, you got it permanently soon. All right. That would be awesome, me with my shirtless chest taking a picture with Will Wheaton, right? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he would love that. <laughs> Maybe better, we'll just get you a Sharpie, you can write Wesley Crushers on your chest. <laughs> or, or the Wesley Crushers. Yes, right. the Crushers, we're crushing the Wesleys. <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. I, I, I definitely like him. If I get a chance to meet him, uh, that'd be fun for me, because re- I've enjoyed him over the years. And uh, uh, But definitely like going out to Water City Comic Con. Uh, I'm going to be set up there with my artwork, I'm going to be set up with the comics I've got going on. Scott, uh, you're bringing a bunch of stuff also. Uh, yes, I will have, I'll have my artwork obviously, but also some of my various books that I've done and published and things like that. Uh, I'll be I'll be doing limited commissions. I don't do many at Motor City only because it's so busy there. Yeah, it's, tough. Uh, it's hard to draw and deal with customers at the same time. So I'll, I'll be very limited. Maybe if you come out on, on Friday early, I'll be available for commissions. But Saturday, I, I won't be. It gets too crazy there. Yeah. They so, get good hours. It starts at 12.30 yeah. on Friday and goes till 7. Yep, and I, I'll give a shout out too to uh, my brothers in the 501st, the Great Lakes Garrison. Um, it, we always come out in force for that. We usually have about 70 or so costume characters. Uh, so they really go all out. And, and they bring a lot of stuff to do at the show too. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, so if you want pictures with, with Star Wars characters, 
go there for that. And no. uh, Alan, are you part of the bubble for sure? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I okay. uh, I purchased. Uh, we the, have to haze them still. Yeah. <laughs> I actually I purchased the um, the Anavos costume when it came out. Scott helped me. How many years? Three years ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, not too. Not or, too yeah, and then uh, it came, and actually, my original goal was to finish it for uh, Motor City Comic Con. Okay. Last year. Okay. <laughs> so you're still working on that. I'm down to. <laughs> what he's learned is is how much effort goes into making a, a screen actor a Star Wars costume for the Bible first. It's yes. a lot of work, and almost always, whatever your time frame is, mm -hmm. add a year. <laughs> I think uh, we're going to have to talk about this more in a future episode. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Because um, I know you're big into the Bible first. Yeah. Um, you know, with Alan, I, we were talking last week, I think you're also looking into a uh, Imperial uniform. Uh, yes, officer. I have so, the, the, the black Imperial officer's uniform, yeah. which yeah. surprisingly took quite a long time to assemble all the parts okay. because of the screen accuracy requirements. Right. Yeah, when you're, a ca when you're new to it, you, you yeah. think it's a, oh, this will be easy. Then you find out, how much minutia goes into the costume. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you think, he's like, oh, I got it done. Then you, you submit and you get back this this long list of <laughs> what you missed. He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. so, like, uh, I, Alan I, will be with yeah. us soon. Yeah. I, I figured that the Imperial officer would be easier than having to construct the Stormtrooper, so I ordered it, uh, hoping to actually to make it to Detroit Tigers Star Wars Day last year. but. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, due to shipping delays and the such, mm -hmm. I, I didn't get it on time. But then I said, well, I can assemble all of the accessories. And I got the badges and the boots and everything, only to find out that my badge was for the green uniform and not for the black <laughs> uniform. And that, you know, my boots were uh, not officer uh, officer level. Okay. You know, um, they, were, they were black and they were tall, but, you know, they weren't, you know, uh, officer boots or something. Right. So I actually ended up. It seems like a lot of work. It is. Well, you know the thing it's is, a is passion. That, <laughs> the thing is, is that I've got enough extra rejected pieces that I could probably put together another costume. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> a third <laughs> option. <laughs> and then also someone who I'm really looking forward to seeing at Motor City Comic Con, uh, Barbara Eden's going to be out there. Oh, that's awesome. Meeting. I'm hoping I get a chance to get over there and say hi to her and get a picture with her. Um, just, I loved her growing up. I do have an art piece that I did of her, a portrait that I sell at cons. And uh, so I, I'm hoping to get her to sign one of my art pieces of that, so. That's something I started doing recently is uh, when there's people I want to meet trying to have something uh, that I've drawn that uh, I can have them sign that based on their fan of that. Now this is a surprise <laughs> entry into the Motor City Comic Con. Dennis Rodman's going to be there. The um, worm. He was in a movie, wasn't he? He's done a couple movies over the years. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Um, what... They were that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, did, he did a TV series as well. Did he, he do was, a uh, He was uh, supposedly a, a, this really rugged mercenary. Um, and they, he was only like a reoccurring... You know, it's part-time character. Okay, so he's just it's like, it's like it's like when the, when the main cast needed like an extra body, they would hire him, and because he's you know I don't know six foot, whatever. I mean, yeah, he's I like huge. Yeah. He's tall. I've, I've yeah. uh, seen him in person once. Um, I was at the Willow Run Airport after they won in 1989 when they flew in. They flew round ball one into Willow Run Airport. There, got off, met all the fans. were just slapping hands and. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. Had a great time. I ended up on CNN and, and all that stuff. So I was very happy with that. But uh, definitely he's tall. Got to see John Sally there. He was part of the Bad Boys era of Detroit basketball, um, which I really love uh, Detroit Pins basketball, especially back then. I see that on Detroit, and I think we're going to start seeing a recurrence of of the Bad Boy era in terms of the hard play. Um, you know, and I'm not that big a sports guy. I can sit and talk about sports forever, but definitely in the, I'm looking forward to next year. And hopefully they can come out and be the Pistons of old and start winning championships again. Well, they also just re-released the Pistons logo, which yeah. is more in terms, or more in line with the old Bad Boys logo. Right, and I think they're going for that look, so yeah. that's Very pretty cool. cool. But that's kind of neat to see Dennis Rodman at the show, so those are our fans. Yeah, yeah, out. yeah. And then who else we got coming out? Anybody else uh, excited about Scott? Well, like uh, James uh, Remar, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He was the dad in Dexter. Yes. I, I really enjoyed him. He's been in tons of other things as well, but uh, that, for me, that's how I always think of him. As, he's he's a you know, uh, big character actor. He yeah, I mean, tons of shows and movies. you got to respect a guy who can raise a, a, a moral serial killer, <laughs> uh, who, you know, Trying to kill off bad guys, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, Dexter did a good job with that. So. Is that the guy from uh, Forty Eight Hours? 
Uh, he probably was on forty eight hours. You know what? Oh, I can I can pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> The beauty of technology, we can see their credits. I think that's probably yes, the first. Yes, 48 hours. That's yeah. the first time that I, I recognize him. him. Eddie Murphy, Nick Nolte, he was the, the really, really bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so he, he was, I just loved him in Dexter, though. That's that's how I know him. I, but I every time I see him, I'm like, oh, it's Dexter's dad. That's how I know him. <laughs> I'm sure he loves that. I know that instead of his real name. Yeah, we're going to be scrolling just to go the other way here. And we've got, uh, was it? Who's we got before? Uh, oh, we got we got uh, Herbert right. Jefferson. That's right. We're talking about Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. That's oh, what I was looking he for. He was Boomer. Herb Jefferson Jr. I've met him a couple times. Always uh, really good with the fans at the shows. Um, you know, so it's, he's one of the the classic Battlestar guys. So it's yep. a chance to meet him. Yeah, he's from the. And for those who aren't sure, the the character Boomer. If you only know the new series, that's um, oh yeah. God, what's her name? <laughs> it was the it actress' Park? name. Was it Grace? Her? Park. She was Asian. Yeah. yeah. Grace Park, Park is not Asian. Yeah. She's on she's on Hawaii <laughs> Five O right now. So yeah. I know she looks like well, Alan, uh, you're our Asian expert. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a Vietnamese or something like that. Yeah, I think it's Chris Park. Um yeah, but he has an original one. Um I've seen over years. He's really big in uh, military stuff. I've seen him he posts stuff he's visited yeah. with different especially the submariners. He's really big in uh, doing stuff for them. Awesome. So Yeah, uh, one surprise is there is no Star Wars guest this year. That went, I was shocked on that, considering with all the Star Wars stuff going on. But <laughs> I, I well, know. there was just another show this last weekend. Um, what was that big show? Um, there was only one Star Wars guest in the whole show, and it was somebody who she just did a small like voice role or something. Yeah. Um, which usually you see the Star Wars everywhere. So I'm just curious. Is that? I wonder if there's something from higher up that's they're trying to limit their appearance to, for their events now, or, or if maybe because of celebration incidents. You know, celebration was about a month ago. Yeah, so I don't know how they would throw it off, but I've saw a couple people post around the country here and there, but not as much as in past. Um, Daniel Logan's been popping up a little more. Uh, young Boba Fett. Yep. Um, so he's back doing some shows along with Ray Park. Yeah, Ray, we usually see um, on the road. Ray, Ray's all. Ray puts on a show for the fans too. He, yeah. He loves uh, doing his uh, Darth Maul. Lightsaber spinning, and, and he'll fight little kids. With their he did that at Pittsburgh back in 2006 when I was there, mm. and he grabbed the kids' uh, double-ended lightsaber yeah. and put on a, just an a impromptu demonstration. Right. The look on the kid's face was like, "Oh my God!" This this guy near his mom goes, "That's Darth Maul." And like, "Oh, really?" And, and then he got done. That. And the classic that he is is as soon as he got done doing that, he flipped the, the, the lightsaber around, grabbed the sharpie, signed it, gave it to the kid, and and, yeah. and didn't ask for anything. I mean, that's, right. that to me is a classic when they take care of the kids at the shows like that. So. Let's see, who's this person? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of, they bring a lot of guests at Motor City, and there's some that um, don't always know every single one. Uh, other people do, because they, they pop in different shows and movies. That we oh, watch, I know so. who this is. Um, who is that? This is, uh, her name is uh, Hannah Kosolka. I, I don't know her by name, but if you have been watching the rebooted, um, the new Exorcist TV series, okay, she's the um, the girl who is possessed. In okay, the Exorcist. She played the Lin Linda Blair character then. Uh, Linda Blair. Right? Well, the, the spoiler alert: the <laughs> mom is Linda Blair grown up. It's, oh, okay. Um, Gina Davis plays um, Reagan. Regan okay, Day. and. Um, so that was who Linda Blair played. I wish Linda Blair played it now, but yeah. you know, Gina Davis does a great job too. Um, right. And then, uh, but this is her daughter, and the demons are going after her now as revenge or whatever. Have you seen the show? Um, I saw. Yeah, it's only one season out so far. Okay. Uh, as I don't think season two started back up, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, okay. It's really dark. They get. I have to check that. I I love the original Exorcist movie. It's one of those movies that a lot of people can watch. Yeah, it's it's so. up. It gets intense. Yeah. So they, I I thought they did a good job. Uh, since it was a sequel, I'll be more into that. I wasn't as interested in Bates Motel, which is a prequel. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind some prequels, but when you know the complete end of the story, because it's going to lead to that point. So cool. Um, anything else about Water City you want to talk about, Scott? Uh, no, just come on out. Uh, you know, if, if you guys are coming out, uh, look on look them up online if you don't have tickets yet. You, I'm sure you can still buy tickets. And they the have website. parking information, which is very important online. Yes, um, especially if you're coming out Saturday. Come early. Like, it, it can well, get and bad I saw, traffic. And I did see online they have a shuttle running from Novi High School. I think it's like $2 each way. Right. And that's a, you can park there. They can drive you in. That way you don't have to mess with the parking. Yeah, and so definitely utilize the website for the parking information because... Uh, and, they've expand, and they have Saturday. expanded their parking there. Yes. I looked online at the map and they've got a lot more areas uh, the show place has. Mm -hmm. They know they get busy for not just Motor City Comic Con but other yeah. events. We, they get about 60000 I, I think last year it was, it was somewhere between fifty and sixty. Uh, Saturday's the busy day. 
late. Right. Um, so I, the show starts at 10.30. If you say, oh, I'm just going to show up and be there at 1, you're going to be waiting forever to yeah. get in. Also, it's uh, it, it seems like every other year we hit, have a heat wave. And this year it's changing. <laughs> it's starting to feel like uh, it's going to be hot this weekend, right? Uh, it's, no, it's going to be in the low 70s. Oh, really? Um, there's oh, a chance of rain. It's six today. Chance of rain on Saturday. There's definitely rain on Sunday. They're oh, okay. So, well, just uh, it, you may have a long line to wait in, so you know, bring water. or Bring an umbrella. Bring something to protect yourself from the sun in case the sun's out. Because we've had people in line waiting too long. And, yeah. and now, Scott's going to be at table, I looked this up for us, uh, table F, as in Frank, 8, the number 8. And I will be at the Tomcat table. That's F14. Oh, hey. <laughs> I was trying to get table FU, but I think Dominic got that one. <laughs> Actually, you can go visit our pal Dominic there, too, this weekend with us. Do you know where you're yes. located? Yes. Um, make sure you go to table H1 Mess Bucket Comics first, and then go to these guys after. <laughs> but, but because you go there first, remember, don't spend your money at the first place you visit. <laughs> <laughs> no one does. Yeah. And, and one, one way to identify Dominic's table is he, he has this giant deem, red demon head named Ravager that's sitting on his uh, on his tabletop. It'll be the good looking one between the two of them. Right. And, right. Uh, <laughs> Those love bad boys. That's right. Yeah. And that's also fun. a quick plug, I will have the Comic Con mom. My mom, Connie Pence, will be with us that's this right. weekend. So come by, say hi to her. She loves meeting all her fans. She's got a million of them out there. A million? Uh, yeah, she has to because every time I go, I, I walk by, I come back and someone buying something. I'm like, oh yeah, I buy from your mom every year. I'm like, Okay, I believe you know, that's a question. Yours? <laughs> Isn't that like a question on the U.S. Census? That's yeah. how you got this. Data? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Brent, I think since um, the Comic Con mom has a million fans, there should be a print Comic Con mom print. I think we're gonna have to work on some. I was thinking more yeah. of a T-shirt that would get through T minus twenty four. Oh, yeah, a whole, a whole line of merch. Yeah. Get, get a, I, love, <laughs> I love the Comic Con mom. <laughs> we can do a little tiny plushie. There we go. <laughs> we'll just do. We'll just do the head. We'll get do a little hair. Why don't you see if you can get her uh, an autograph table? Picture table. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> she needs to be. We'll get her a nice autograph. All the celebrities will be lining up for her autograph. Yeah, mm -hmm. she'll, she'll sign your program. So yeah. come on by. Yeah. yeah, now, and speaking of uh, Connie, I, or it's you, I believe, is um, with our another new sponsor we have. Yes, we have a great new sponsor. Uh, it's actually my chiropractors, uh, Loringer Family Chiropractic. They are based in Belleville, Michigan, as well as Dexter, Michigan. Um, I've been going there for quite a few years. Um, just to give a quick plug for them, they take great pride in providing the finest chiropractic care to each and every patient, and I can be a test of that. Yeah, now, for people who don't understand chiropractic work and haven't had it done, um, you as a patient, what, what have you noticed as far as benefits when you go? The benefits is, uh, I was in a severe car accident uh, almost 11 years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, was in a lot of pain, still got some pain from that, um, and that. What they do is they realign your spine, it basically fixes your nerves, moves things around, and get things going. And it's not super invasive. Right. Uh, they do adjustments. They list on the website how they do it. They use what they call an activator. They do by the hand as well on the tables. Um, what I noticed was um, I, get, I was getting a lot of numbness in my arms, um, a lot of pain through the back. And by them manipulating, moving stuff around just right, it's eliminated a lot of that pain that yeah. I go on. Um, because of my how severe my injuries were, I go. I'm one of the few people that does go once a week. But they start you off on getting you going first, and then they get you a maintenance phase where you're not going as often. Right. Only when you need it. Um, one thing I love about them is they work with you. They work with insurances. Um, they will. Uh, you know, they're not looking to just have you come in and spend tens of thousands of dollars. They they right. want to. They build. They build relationships. Right. And every doctor there that I, I deal with has been perfect. And. I could call it every doctor in the world, but the two main doctors are uh, Dr. Ahmed, Dr. Brian, they run the practice. They have Dr. Jen there, Dr. Kren is out in Dexter. Um, uh, they just added uh, Dr. Brian's sister. Uh, she came over from her practice um, and kind of joined theirs. Uh, so they have a nice uh, uh, staff of doctors. And then the regular staff there is always very nice to deal with and helping setting appointments, getting things going. And then they do massages. Um, I've been getting massage there about every three to four months, and that helps also with my wellness uh, going on because with uh, muscles, problems I have. Uh, Plus the stress of dealing with me. <sighs> I need more massages. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they do a of they do massage therapy. They also offer different products like orthotics through foot levelers. Uh, they do the Young Living Essential Oils. They have aromatherapy. They offer a full line of vitamins. Awesome. Um, there's a lot going on there. Definitely check them out. The website, uh, we have a link at oddmusings.com. Right. It's kind of long, but it is Loringer, uh, family. FamilyChiropractic.com. 
Um, but definitely go on to oddmusings.com to link to them. And you can give them a call. Call them at 734-697-4244. You can set up an initial consultation. They do on-site digital x-rays. Mm -hmm. So basically, they can take care of everything that's going there and, and check your insurance, too. And so as far as where Belleville is located, that's only like 10, 15 minutes from the airport, correct? Right, right off of I-94. You can exit Belleville Road and head uh, south down Belleville Road. You'll come to what they call Five Points. It'll be on your right-hand side. Awesome. Kitty Corner from the A&W. Oh, wow. Well. And it's one of the original A and W type drive-ins too. So, so get a root beer float and, and chiropractic service. At <laughs> there you go. So definitely get a hold of Lawrence Chiropractic. I recommend them because I've been going there for many years. Awesome. And I want to thank them for being a sponsor of the show. Uh, we do really appreciate them. And just a little bit on them, we'll be announcing in a couple weeks a nice little giveaway from them also. Yeah. So stay tuned in the coming weeks. Uh, I think in two weeks. I think it is. Yeah. Something we'll, like that. Yeah. Two weeks. We'll announce it. Uh, a little contest and uh, who knows? Maybe there'll be a little. A rub down for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sound weird when you say that. <laughs> they they do uh, totally legit rub down. They have they have great massages. Good and, and therapeutic that, massages. And I can recommend anyone there. If my favorite's Terry, if she's listening, uh, yeah. she does a great job for me, and uh, she knows uh, some of the medical history to help out with that too. So they work with me on that. Awesome. All right. So thank you, Lauren, your family chiropractic. And that and we've got a giveaway. Yes, we have a giveaway which comes from our. Uh, one more of our sponsors, which is Imagine Theaters, yeah. and they have, uh, in sponsoring part of the sponsorship with us, they have donated a pair of golden tickets that are going to be. I've got a golden ticket. Yeah, so we're going to be doing this weekly contest for mm -hmm. for a while here. Um, we're not sure how long it's going to go on for, but at least for the next three or four weeks, for sure, we can guarantee. Yeah. So we got this pair of golden tickets, and they're good for uh, Monday through Thursdays is what they're good for at any of their Imagine Theaters. And they're located, they have locations in Michigan, Minneapolis, and uh, Illinois. Illinois, yeah. And, yeah. So, and if you go online to uh, their, their website, uh, which we have a link on oddmusings.com, you can check out all the theaters. Uh, they gave us a couple passes to try out ourselves, which we're going to be using tomorrow night to see the new Aliens movie. So in a couple yes. weeks, we'll be talking about Alien Aliens. Covenant. We'll be reviewing that. Yeah. And, uh, and they're easy to use online. You put in, you click uh, that you want to use a pass. You put in the code that's on it, and you can pick your seat and have everything set online. You walk in, go to your seat, and have your right. Now, pass. just to clarify, now, Alien Covenant is coming out. That'll be a brand new movie. You are still able to use these golden tickets on that. Uh, as long as it's Monday through Thursday. Correct. Yeah. So even, even if it's a brand new... Just out. Yeah, these are the box. Box. the basic passes. These are the golden passes. Right. So th this is kind of like the Willy Wonka. Yes. <laughs> contest of of uh, just the movie world. Chocolate not included. <laughs> Chocolate not included. <laughs> Unless you buy it. So uh, all right, we have a winner here. So who's yes. our winner, Scott? Okay. Well, before we get to the winner, let's just say repeat what the question was. So what we're doing is through the website. If you go to the Imagine Theater page, we will post a question each week. So I'll be refreshing the question for next week with with the new contest. Yeah. And um, this week's question had to do with last week's episode, where we asked what um, what was the favorite quote from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Volume Two for Brett? And the answer, Brett, I'm very Poppins, y'all. <laughs> That's right. From spoken by Yandu, <laughs> and um, and that it really was a great line in the movie. So out of the the uh, the multitude of entries, the, the multitudes, um, we did a. Uh, a random number drawing, and the winner of the contest is Sean Deeroff. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Out of Wayne, Michigan. Congratulations, Sean. Congratulations, Sean. So I'm going to be putting these in the mail today, and you'll get them within a couple days at your house. And uh, hope you enjoy whatever movie you see. Uh, and please feel free to message us with a little review of whatever you thought of the Magic Theaters. Definitely. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. And of course, with Imagine, don't forget to join the rewards. And if you take your tickets on Tuesday, you get free popcorn as a reward member. That's right. Free movie and free popcorn if you go on Tuesday. How awesome is Can't that? Can't beat that. So that was great. Uh, we're going to do more of those uh, giveaways, so watch the website for that. Yep. Um, we're getting close to wrapping up here, guys. Thanks for joining us this time. We've had uh, a lot of fun. Alan, thank you for being here with us. Yep. Thank you for having me. And that, uh, we've got a little promo for next week. Uh, we're going to be pre-recording that show because we're going to all be traveling around that time. Yep. Uh, so you'll hear us talk about the show live next week, but it won't be actually live. It'll be pre-recorded. I will be in a metal tube at 10,000 feet <laughs> on my way to Phoenix Comic Con. Probably a little higher yeah, than that. So, so next week, we're, we're really excited. We're going to have a special guest, um, actress Tracy Lee Coco is coming on. And uh, she has been in a ton of... Uh, Star Trek of uh, the movies as well as the Next Generation series. She's an actress. She's a she was in Star Baywatch. Um, Baywatch. 
Demolition Man. Demolition Man. Yeah. Sylvester Sloan. So she's been in a in a bunch of things. So we're excited to have her on as a guest next week. Yep. And we will also be previewing Phoenix Comic Con, which both Tracy and myself will both be at, as and well as we're going to have Dominic with us, hanging out, talking about Echo Network a little bit, as well as he'll be talking about Phoenix since he'll be there. Yeah. And then I'm going to be up in Traverse City, Michigan, for the Cherry Capital Comic Con. Yeah, so four. we'll preview that too. But yep. just a reminder, this weekend though, before we get ahead of ourselves, is Motor City Comic Con. Come out, see Dominic, me, Brett. Yep. F eight minus twenty four. Yep. F eight, F fourteen, and H one are your destinations there. That's right. And so. T minus 24, I'm not sure the location, but you'll have a big booth. So come out and see us there. Dominic, go ahead and roll that outro for us. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. I need a cheer infection. <laughs> <laughs> I can bring Tom Tom's next time.